we're now a little over an hour late for Ben, but he's used to us being late with him, so we got Ben with his things to do here, so go ahead, Ben. All right. The, uh, the first thing that I've got on the agenda is to accept the resignation of John Whiter, uh, effective this Friday. Mm. He came in last Monday and turned in his two weeks. Uh, I believe his plan is to go back to Martin area. He worked there for eight years before he came to us. Worked four years with us. And, uh, they're moving him over to Gilmore City, so he's a mile away from work. And uh, I think the, the pay's a little bit better. Expecting next Friday, that's going to put a hole. This Friday. This Friday. This Friday. Yeah. You may have to use some of your part timers if we get a snowstorm. Yeah. Before you add and get somebody hired. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, uh, this one kind of coincides with the uh, the next item, which is approved the posting of a Humboldt County Secondary Road job opening for a laborer in the Humboldt shop. Um, the two are kind of tied together right now. I've already got the position open for transfer between the two shops. I think that ends at the end of the day today. I don't see anybody transferring uh, to the Humboldt location. So I'm pretty positive that the opening will be for Humboldt. Motion to accept the resignation and approve the posting for a job. I okay. second the motions. We have a motion and a second for the acceptance of the resignation as of Friday the 14th and approve the posting as Ben said through he thinks today. So in the humble shop. Any other discussion? Well, I suppose we can't say we can't, won't accept it, but I, I'm just going to say begrudgingly. Yeah. Right. to see him go, wish him the best. Yep. We hate to see <coughs> man go to the train. We usually have some standard language we usually put with regret. Is that? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I'll put, I'll put yes. that in the minute. So. Yes. Exactly. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And that, that was both. Uh, the resignation mm -hmm. and the job posting. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that will be, do you think, through today? Uh, the the five-day posting with the shops is through today. I'll end up putting this in. Uh, i got to have it in by noon today to get it in Thursday's paper. Uh, and we'll take applications till the 28th. I think that's another added benefit of our website if we have the ability to mm -hmm. pop that on when we get our website up and, up and run. run. The school use that pretty much exclusively now for employment. Well, oh, really? Perfect. Too much cost to Des Moines Register. Okay. Uh, third item that I've got is to approve pay voucher number six to Manat Inc. for project LB 19-1 in the amount of $6,283.32. This is the sub-final voucher for the paving job. Um, there was roughly 300 tons of rock that we didn't have tickets for that they they did their project audit on it and they come up with 300 tons short that we were and provided the tickets for us and so I thought we were pre-finaled already but so that would be the egg except for the retainage right? This is everything except for the retainage yep. yeah there's about 78,000 in retainage that we're holding on to right now. Make a motion to pay voucher number six to Manette the LB 19-1 in the amount of $6,283.32. There's the motion. I no, that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I have a motion and a second for the LB 19-1. Any other discussion? Just a quick question on the percent completed at 107. Is that because of 
how do you explain that? Uh, we ran a little bit over on our uh, asphalt with blacktop service. Uh, we we're also a little bit over on our quantity of concrete, and we added a structure replacement on the south side of the Clare Corner intersection. That was a separate project that we had scheduled. And we had, I think, 100,000 set aside for it, and we ended up doing it for about 30. That got added into this. That, that got added. So Manats did that yep. when they were there. Yep. So Manats saved us about 7,000 on that one. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear it. This also has, wasn't there a bond for set this. up on this for <coughs> what was driven on? Yeah, for what was driven on, uh, I've, I've talked to John Beatty on that. Um, Redding subcontractor drove on it when it was still relatively fresh. They've got a uh, uh, basically a claim number and from what I'm told those claims are open for five years. It's either five or seven years. So, so, to come back. so if to anything to happens to it and, and talking to the uh, uh, the bonding agency representative uh, they had an independent engineer come up and look at it here in August, and their plan is to have them come up the next two Augusts after that to make sure that there's no damage associated with what they drove on. Okay. Perfect. All right. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Last item I have on the agenda is to approve pay voucher number one to Rockness Brothers. For project LC-102406, in the amount of $68,061.99. This is for the project over by the Cedar Script of Quarry on the Claire Black Tub. This, no, this no, no, there was no issues with that one. They were in and out in three, four days. I is that the last of their three projects? Yep. Yeah, so, so they're all done and moved out now. So we look like we're going to be right on looks like a guesstimate? Yep. Nothing there, in there was, line. There was nothing out of line on this one. We didn't run into an old bridge next to it or anything. Where old we had culvert that. or nothing. Right. But I'd make a motion to approve the payment to Rognes Brothers uh, voucher number one number LC102406 for $68,061.99. Okay. Second. Uh, motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All the same sign. Motion carries. Speaking of road cracking, uh, have you noticed up there on the Bradgate blacktop you know, when you turn off 169, I've been going across that over to Otter. There's about, I don't know, about a mile. Yep. There's, it's really cracking about starting to crack. two and a half feet off the edge of the road for several. Quite a bit of that cracked shortly thereafter because uh, uh, Carla Peterson's non English speaking workers <laughs> drove on it. I was going to say, I haven't seen any place else that it's cracking, but that place just right that there, area. it just jumps out at you. We're replacing a couple panels with uh, the paving job that runs north and south from Rutland to Bode. Um, I think there's five or six panels that we're replacing right close to that intersection. Otherwise, the stuff that's further away will end up uh, sealing next year and uh, basically monitoring it. I don't think it's affecting the concrete anything. But, no, uh, but it sure makes it look bad. Yeah, especially after a light rain. Wow. Well, I that that's, that yeah, that's the only location really that... I haven't seen it. I mean, I've been looking at that every time I drive up and down. That just glares at you when you... On the north side. On the north side. Yep. Wow. Well, that, that's another reason why we, the barricades are up. Yeah, those are part of the most important part of the project, is making sure the barricades are up and 
that everybody mm -hmm. knows. What question on the it's completed except of course for the surfacing like I'm below the L for me C twenty. Yes. Keep getting public questioning. Are there gonna be any rails installed no. on it? None. No guardrails. No guardrails. That was the uh, uh, the deciding factor with going this way is we can go wide enough to get the DOT's clear zone and then we don't need to have guardrails through there. It'll be wide open. So the only issue that I'm going through with uh, the contractor right now is the last concrete pour that they had. They didn't have any insulating blankets to keep the concrete to 50 degrees for two days like they were supposed to. So I issued non-compliance with that. <coughs> I've talked to the DOT on it and uh, they're recommending a reduced payment for the 12 yards of concrete or whatever it was that's left. So once I know for sure uh, what route will go with that, I'll, I'll make sure to let you guys know. But so obviously we know they're going to, you know, put the surface on next year. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be any additional signage or anything? Uh, We've got the signs up right now. Still, we left. Uh, we took down the road close 500,000 signs mm -hmm. posts in the ground. Right, but is there the detour and everything's still up? We just put bags on. Right. No, I see that. Not that signage. Is there going to be? Is there? Are there going to be any additional? Is there? Because there's no guardrails. Period. Right. Any uh, things that will get put in as far as marker, reflective type things or object anything? markers? We won't have to have any of that on there as well. Um, and the delineator posts that go up the hill towards your they're place. Still, they're already there. They're there, but they'll get pulled. Those are those are spec. You're supposed to have seven of them, I believe, in in each direction of the bridge. Well, now that there's no bridge there, there's no guardrail. That all so kind of goes. It'll all it'll hand all in hand with minus without the guardrails. Yeah. I think it will obviously look a lot nicer. It should be a lot better for snow. Too. Well, that, and then I think it's just. Odd without the paving, obviously, but when yeah. that gets completed, I think every because everybody said, well, they're so used to a bridge and all that mm -hmm. stuff there that it's a little long, wide open. Yeah, it will. Open, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, but it'll be a lot nicer with the surface. Plus, right. so it's, it's a rough story side. about somebody hooking the, anything. No, there's nothing to get to. There's nothing to get hung up in that. Yeah, that was my other wide open. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the concern on the last little bit of concrete they poured. Mm -hmm. Do you actually have a structural concern with that? Anytime you pull, anytime you pour concrete, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to keep it uh, uh, at 50 degrees for two days so that the, the curing, the hydration of the concrete isn't affected by them not doing it. Basically, the concrete froze. So come, come next spring, uh, I'll find out exactly what it is. I mean. You be able to go in there with a hammer and start tapping and having chunks come out. And if that's the case, then they got to go in and, and jackhammer about 8 to 12 inches of it out and report it. Obviously, you'll know this before any surfacing is done on the road. Right. Yep. You, got your, you got your eye on it. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ben. Sorry about being late. Yeah. No snowboard for this year. No more snow. No more snow. Yeah. That's good for the time being. I see Rick came back. You got something else for us? Just quickly, he has equipment running. They're finishing greasing and a couple of the machines. They're moving the big excavator tracking right now as I talked to Jordan to start digging. Um, they're going to be hitting it hard, uh, but they have not dug yet, but should be in the next few minutes. You tell him we're going to get a paycheck? <laughs> I told our inspector, but I didn't <laughs> say that he had to pass it along if he didn't want to. So, um, Gerke up there, they can't give us an answer yet on crossing the road. Um, Jordan's been working on it to try and tell us. Uh, just not sure of themselves. And I said, well, I think Ben's still here. I'll just catch him for a second. We, we've told them we need to know. Um, Jordan thinks they probably will dig to the road and then decide. But just depend on what they're looking at for upcoming weather. Yeah. Yeah. Back to you, Ben. I see you on our claims book. Did one of our dump trucks come? Uh, yes, we did get one of our dump trucks to show up. It's over in Hardy right now. 
I did a walk around with Denny last, I don't know, it was last Thursday or what day it was. Uh, there was uh, a couple of items that they're changing, and uh, I think we're supposed to get our second one this week. Notice the bump in our free account. That like, wow! <laughs> oh yeah, we have a truck coming. So yeah, that was about a hundred and One of the interesting things we saw at Charles City the other day had show and tell. Everybody goes around what they bought and what they didn't buy. Most everybody bought road graders with cats instead of John Deere's. Really? Must be the trend up there. I didn't hear one John Deere other than us, did you? No, I know we've got good salesmen up in that area. We've, yeah. got, we've got two machines budgeted for this year, and I talked to the cat salesman last week. He's wondering when. I yeah. said it'd probably be February. It's going to be after we do the county side of the budget, and then probably before I mm -hmm. jump into the DOT side of the budget. I'm not saying we're wrong. I just say that's a well, bad I think we, I say we take a real hard look at both. Oh yeah, we do. Uh, Real hard we, we take we take quotes between the two. Um, the past fifteen years, you know, I mean, uh, deer's been cheaper. But we won't go there. That cheaper isn't always better. We'll just say it that way. But there's, you know, reason that some of these counties are running cats. I've heard too, like Carl said, they heard at the supervisors meeting that uh, you know, all things considered, it might be less costly in the long run. So just something be interesting to take a look. I'm sure that they'd, you know, come up and visit with, with everybody, both John Deere and Cat. Well, I mean, both, uh, both representatives, both salesmen, I mean, they'll, they'll talk to your ear off about how their products Oh, are they're always, like I said, salesmen, they always have whatever they're selling. It's always exactly. the best. Exactly, yeah. yeah. No, we, uh, we'll be looking at something probably in February, trying to bring these specs together and, and get quotes. All right. With that, anything else? Do you have a good? I just got to bring up, but I, you already talked about it. So I don't want to read dredge up the, the technical aspect of the record keeping and the drainage district stuff that we had talked about. I know you were talking yep, to Trish about that. So Trish told her she said that they evidently visited in their thanks, meeting ben. also. Thanks, yes, good. thanks, Ben. So she said that it would be something that. She would like to have it too. seriously like to see also. I think that's something in the fairly near future we pursue and get some more information. I mean, I did get the handout from that, and it goes along with our discussion on website. We need to step up the plate on the technology, and especially if it makes things uh, run better, workable, more workable, more workable. Absolutely. All right. With that, one thing I, uh, Jamie and. Lucas was up to their meeting up there. They sent out their objectives, uh, objectives for next year. One of them I thought was interesting is the legislation should be passed to phase Some in a decoupling day. of agricultural buildings from agricultural land and to value agricultural buildings at their full market value. In other words, the hog buildings and machine sheds and stuff. If you build hog building on ag land right now, and the taxes don't go up, it stays the same on that property. If they put a hog building on it, the taxes will be put on the building. So that would come back to the counties for uh, road maintenance and expenditures. Farm Bureau yeah. usually killed that. They've tried it for years. Yeah. They, they usually do, but it's, it's on there again. So I just thought that was interesting. Well, I had. I did. With that, that's right. That's big. I okay. agree. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All the same sign. Motion carries. Ten fifty.